everybody. Welcome back. Dr. Peter Glidden here, your steadfast advocate for health, welcoming you to another live edition of Fire Your MD. Now, we need perspective when it comes to the way that our health care is uh, disseminated here. Because in point of fact, it's not health care, it's disease management, and everybody needs to know that. It should be illegal for MDs to uh, advertise that they practice health care because in point of fact, they practice disease management. Uh, there's nothing wrong with disease management as long as the client, the patient, knows that what they're signing up for is disease management as opposed to health care. If MDs practiced health care, then we would be getting healthier, but we are, in fact, getting sicker. The statistics are alarming. Uh, arthritis is rapidly rising. Obesity uh, has risen by 30% in our childhood population in the last 20 years. One-third of American adults are obese. Type 2 diabetes is rapidly uh, rising in uh, uh, incidence. Arthritis, heart disease, cancer, uh, multiple sclerosis, um, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. All of these conditions are getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse with the passage of time. And, you know, we're locked into this cultural myth that, well, that's kind of just life. And, you know, there's probably some toxic crap in the environment or solar rays, or ultraviolet radiation sneaking in from the Pleiades or whatever. And that's really what's causing all of this nonsense. But in point of fact, the reason that everybody is getting worse in the health arena is because the MDs suck at health care. They do not practice health care. They do not. Their therapeutics are suited for trauma, surgery when it's necessary, and a handful of infectious diseases. That's it. That's the wheelhouse of the reductionistically trained allopathic physician, otherwise known as your MD. But people in the United States, quite frankly, not even physicians understand this distinction. Because MDs actually believe that it's their way or the highway, that their way is the only way, and that everybody but the MD practices substandard quack medicine. They do. I mean, for goodness sake. It's one of life's greatest ironies, <coughs> I believe, <coughs> that people who espouse the scientific method that people who believe that, you know, the rational scientific method is best um, completely overlook the obvious, uh, the simple fact of the matter that while they have been in charge of medicine, our health is getting worse and worse and worse. And it's not because we have a bad gene. It's not because we're suffering from a voodoo curse. It's because the MD uh, point of view, the perspective that the MD is trained in when it comes to health and disease is wrong. It's wrong. It's not right. It's wrong. It's completely incorrect. They've thrown the baby out with the bathwater. The tumor is not the disease. It is the result of the disease. So what do cancer researchers do? Well, they'll genetically manipulate a mouse so that it has a pancreatic cancer tumor. Now they have a 10,000 mice, all who have pancreatic cancer tumors, and the reason that they have pancreatic cancer tumors is because they were put there by the MD. The MD spliced some genes together and did this, that, and the other thing uh, to the chromosomal material of the mouse and made the mouse mass-produced mice with pancreatic cancer tumors. All right. So then they take all those 10,000 mice and they try to develop therapies to kill the tumor, which is nuts on the face of it, but that's what they do. Because wouldn't it be better to, you know, not genetically manipulate the mouse in the first place so it doesn't have the cancer tumor? But this isn't how they think. They actually believe that the tumor is the disease. It's the tumor is the thing. So their therapeutics are designed to kill the tumor, kill the tumor, get rid of the tumor, surgically remove the tumor. And we need more surgical procedures. We need more advanced robot surgeons. That's what we need. We need laser scalpels. That's what we need. We need more effective anesthetics. We need much more effective antibiotics so people don't get uh, secondary and tertiary infections post-operation because really surgery is the only thing that can cure cancer. Oops, did they say the word cure? Well, they shouldn't have. 
because it is a poor substitute, quite frankly. I mean, you know, we've all become kind of uh, 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 brainwashed, for lack of a better word, to believe in this methodology. And it seems that an entire generation of women are, quite frankly, okay with having their breasts hacked off when there's even a glimmer of uh, breast cancer anywhere uh, uh, in the neighborhood. Um, you know, which is tantamount to, let's say there was an epidemic of, of, of hand arthritis or hand psoriasis, right? Hand psoriasis. Everybody in the country's got hand psoriasis. It's an epidemic. Well, one solution is to cut the hands off, right? I mean, that's a solution. No more hand, no more hand psoriasis. We wouldn't put up with that, but we're perfectly okay with hacking off the breasts, hacking off the uterus, hacking off the ovaries, hacking off the prostate, right? Taking the lung out. This is the MD methodology, and it is insane on its face because the tumor is not the disease. The tumor is the result of the disease. The clogged artery in the heart is not the disease. It is the result of the disease. The arthritic knee is not the disease. It's the result of the disease. The funky kidney is not the disease. It is the result of the disease. But the MD does not understand this. And so their therapeutics go round and round and round, trying to figure out some way to remove the tumor. Oh, we have to replace the arthritic knee. Why support and promote the body's ability to have healthy knees in the first place when you can just cut the knee out and put the good old titanium one in there? You know, in a perfect world, I mean, think it through. In a perfect allopathic world, the ultimate end game is at birth to take out the heart. Don't need the heart. It's eventually going to fail. You're going to get clogged arteries. The heart's going to go south. There's going to be an enlarged heart. There's going to be some problem somewhere, atrial fib. Something's going to get funky. So everybody gets a mechanical heart. Okay. Don't need the tonsils. Don't need, don't need the adenoids. Don't need the appendix. We're going to take all of those out. And you know what? Eventually, we're going to get arthritis. So let's give two fake knees, two fake hips, two fake shoulders. And you know, we're going to have robot children. Half machine, half man. Let's do the robot eyes. Let's put the robot eyes in, right? That's the ultimate goal of allopathic medicine, a half man, half woman, half machine. Because really, the human body is just a biochemical bag waiting to break. And when it does break, uh, there's no going back. The human body that has consciousness is a function of biochemistry. There's no such thing as a spiritual force inhabiting the human body. There's no such thing as innate, inborn intelligence residing in the human body. When you're dead, it's all over. It's lights out. Consciousness is extinguished. Consciousness is just a function of biochemistry in the first place. So what the hell? Everything that you think and everything that you feel and everything that really makes life what is worthwhile, all the good stuff of life is just biochemical happenstance. This is how the MD thinks. And this is why, you know, since Richard Nixon decided to have a war on cancer in the 60s, we haven't come any closer to being able to cure cancer because the, we've taken the wrong dog to the hunt. And yet, when you listen to the MDs talk about their stuff, they will denigrate every other medical approach towards cancer. Oh, it's all alternative medicine, right? Baloney. Who called it alternative medicine? They did. Who said that they could call it alternative? Alternative to what? Alternative to MD quackery, all right, the only people selling snake oil in the United States have MD after their name. Don't believe me? Statin drugs, for goodness sake. Oh, how about Viox? Viox, the pain medication to end all pain medications, completely 100% non-addictive, no addictiveness whatsoever, relieved pain in an instant. Zero side effects, well, one side effect, death. Half a million people, more or less, died from Viox. Nobody went to jail. Isn't that the very definition of snake oil? It's a drug that's supposed to do A, but instead it does B. Very expensive, and it hurts you. Doesn't do what it said it was going to do, and it hurts you. For goodness sake. This is how far down the road we've come. The MDs kill us. We give them a pass. 
And can you imagine what would happen if one chiropractor or one naturopathic physician gave one patient one herb and it killed them? We, you know, we'd be pilloried in the town square. They'd be throwing tomatoes at us. We'd be run out of town on a rail. We'd be tarred and feathered. We'd be vilified in the press. All chiropractic colleges shut down. All chiropractic doctors thrown in jail. All naturopathic doctors quacks sent to Quack Island. Just go to Quack Island, you quack. But the MDs kill us. The MDs harm us. The MDs bankrupt us. Nothing happens. This is, again, why what we are up to here is so incredibly important. Because nobody sees it this way, and everybody needs to, because this is the correct way. And it's only, you know, 100 years from now, everybody is going to think like this, because it's only a matter of time until conventional medicine implodes on itself and the whole house of cards falls down. It's only a matter of time. They can prop it up as much as they can, but it's only a matter of time until the whole thing collapses in on itself. And people will look back at conventional medicine, the way that it's practiced today, the same way that we look at, you know, the people... Uh, bleeding people to death, right? The, you know, the old fashioned MD treatment lancet, right? Oh, that's crazy. We think back in time. Oh, that's crazy. Those nuts. How could they get away with that? Well, that's exactly what we'll think in the future when we look back at all of this nonsense proffered by the MDs at our expense with no consequences. You know, MD does not stand for medical deity, but I think many people assume that it does. And this is why I have such a hard line. Because nobody else is telling it like it is. And honest to God, you know, there's no grudge here. You need to fire your medical doctor. Not because of any other reason other than their therapeutics don't work. They do not work. It's time we all collectively got a clue and snapped right out of it. I'm Dr. Glidden. This is Fire Your MD Now. Stick around. Welcome back, everybody. You know, the hubris of the MDs is really quite breathtaking. I was reading um, on Medscape.com earlier today about this notion of complementary and alternative cancer treatments, and the MDs were basically saying that, you know, the only valid cancer treatments are MD cancer treatments, and everything else is just, you know, quackery. It's quackery. It's people espousing methodology that is, you know, unscientific and untested. And, you know, well, look, fella, before you take the log out of somebody else's eye or or the twig out of somebody else's eye, you better remove the log from your own. Cancer treatment doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. A number of years ago, there was a 14-year study. They looked at cancer treatments for 14 years in adults. Chemotherapy in adults who had developed cancer for 14 years. Huge T-score. Gigantic data points. 14 years of data from adults who had contracted cancer and were treated with chemotherapy. These results of this study were published in the Journal of Clinical Oncology. I'll get those dates for you in a minute here. Uh, and the results of that, which were published in the gold standard of cancer research, the Journal of Clinical Oncology, 97% of the time, chemotherapy does not work. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. 97% of the time. Now, in a study this big, there's an error score, an error ratio, right? It's 3%. So, what's 97 plus 3? 100. So that means between 94 and 100% of the time, chemotherapy for adult onset cancer doesn't work. It doesn't work. So can somebody please tell me why uh, a scientist, a medical professional who espouses the scientific rational method above all else, would continue to prescribe chemotherapy when it's been proven and published that it doesn't work 97% of the time? Can you tell me how they rationalize that? Please, somebody tell me how they rationalize it. I sound like Captain Kirk. I don't know how they rationalize it. I, you know, I really don't get it. I really just don't get it. But, the, but this is prejudice. This is prejudice. I don't understand how slave owners could have justified owning slaves and treating them like they did. I don't get that. I don't get how Klansmen can despise 
uh, another race of human beings. I don't get how the Nazis could despise and attempt to exterminate an entire race of human beings. I don't get that. I don't get how the other people in Germany who weren't Nazis allowed them to allowed them to continue to do it, and they didn't do anything about it. I don't get that. I don't get sex slavery. I don't get that. I don't get why there's such an unbelievably bad racial divide in this country now between blacks and whites. I don't get it. But it's everywhere all the time. A lot of things I don't get. One of the biggest is how the MDs can espouse the scientific method and then completely ignore the scientific evidence, which proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that their therapeutics do not work. And then they have the audacity to point the finger at other professions. Oh, those chiropractors are quacks. Did you know that the American Medical Association was found guilty in federal court in the 80s of promoting a 10-year slander campaign against the chiropractors? Found guilty. Ordered to pay the chiropractors $25 million in damage, and nobody went to jail. And there's no public outrage. Ladies and gentlemen, the hubris of your MD is legendary and gigantic and scary. It is on par with slave owners. And I am not, I am not exaggerating. They overlook the obvious conveniently. Oh, they're all about research when it proves their point, but when research goes against their intrinsic values, they reject it out of hand. Is this scientific? Is this adult? Does this uh, 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 have integrity? No, it does not. Fire your medical doctor now. Fire them. Stop going to see him. Stop it. Bad dog, no biscuit. They have nothing for you unless you're bleeding to death or have a broken bone. And if you are unlucky enough to be transported to the emergency room, have the emergency room physician drug tested before you let him near you, because as Harvard University published, over 50% of emergency room medical doctors are addicted to street drugs, alcohol, or prescription medications. For goodness sakes, wake up. Enough is enough. The line is drawn here, right now. Fire your medical doctor and stop giving them your respect. We're back after these messages. You know, for one of the best ways that, that I've been able to kind of um, partition this this phenomenon of the um, you know the idiocy which exists in conventional medicine here um, is by referencing the. Harry Potter books. I don't know if there are Harry Potter fans in the audience or not, but you know, in in those books, there were two groups of people. There were the people who were involved with magic, and then there were the people who were not. And you know, there's it's like you're either a, a, a magic person or you're a muggle, and you know, there's no there's no room for anything in the middle it's one or the other and that's i think the way that it is basically in the world i think there are people that are um other centered and have open minds uh and there are other people who are eye centered live their life out of fear and have closed minds and those people are in the majority the people who live their lives out of fear with closed minds are in the majority and i don't know why that is Maybe it's some type of cultural karma, you know, maybe back in Atlantis, it was the other way around, and the people with the open mind screwed it up for everybody. I don't know. I have, I have no idea why this is, but this is how it is. The people who move through life like cowards, intellectual cowardice. You know, I was thinking about this the other day. You know, as a licensed naturopathic doctor in the state of uh, Washington, I can deliver babies, uh, pers perform minor surgery, prescribe drugs. Yeah, I can prescribe drugs. Uh, uh, order any diagnostic test I want. Legally, refer to myself as a physician. Uh, and it's all covered by insurance. Pretty great. Now, you know, I went to a fully accredited by the United States Department of Education medical school, graduated, have a license to practice medicine. Have for you know two decades, 
But if I was simply to walk across state lines, nothing else changed, didn't do anything else, just walked across state lines, moved from Washington to, let's say, oh, I don't know, Illinois. In Illinois, it would be illegal for me to call myself a doctor, and it would be illegal for me to practice medicine. Illegal. That's like throw you in jail illegal. So, and you know, it's nuts, right? And, I, and, I, and yet, you know, we, and it's not, the, it's, it's the same for every naturopathic physician in the world. Every naturopathic physician in the world, right? We're always looking over our shoulder, you know, what is, you know, is somebody going to show up and, and, and cart you away in the middle of the night? Uh, the founder, not the founder, but the, the physician who Bastyr University of Naturopathic Medicine in Seattle, there's a, only a handful of uh, naturopathic medical schools in the country. One of the one that I graduated from was called Bastyr, B like baby, A, S like Sam, T like Thomas, Y, R, the Bastyr University of Naturopathic Medicine, named after one of the pioneers of naturopathic medicine, Dr. John Bastyr. And Dr. Bastier was still alive when I was matriculating in medical school at Bastier University in Seattle. Uh, and I attended a couple of lectures that he gave. I was, you know, uh, lucky enough to hear him speak. Uh, and Dr. Bastier anecdotally said, kind of with a chuckle, that when he was growing up, when he was a naturopathic physician, you know, in the 40s and the 50s, that unless you had been thrown in jail, you weren't really considered a naturopathic doctor. And I was wondering to myself, you know, how many MDs would actually be able to handle that psychological stress? How many would actually be able to handle that? You know, having their profession be on the, the crap end of the stick, having their profession be relegated to the back of the bus, having their profession be considered alternative. How many MDs would be willing to take on that challenge of moving to a state which was unlicensed and unregulated and generating a popular following and then forwarding legislature um, to get their profession licensed and regulated in that state. How many would be willing to stick their head above the trenches and dodge those bullets? Not very many. And yet this is what naturopathic doctors do every day all of the time and yet we're considered back of the bus quacks with substandard training. BS. You know, you got a finger pointing at somebody, you got five, four pointing back at yourself, and that's what's happening with the MDs. They have denigrated every other profession for a hundred years, and this is why I hold no quarter with the MD. Why? Because they drew first blood. I minded my own business, my colleagues minding their own business, just trying to help humanity. Where's the conversation? Oh, you know what? Our therapeutics really for heart disease, they're really not any good. Our therapeutics for cancer, you know what? They're really not any good. What does your profession have to offer? Where's that conversation? You would think that that conversation would happen. Why hasn't that conversation been entertained? Why haven't the uh, MDs gotten together with the chiropractors and said, hey, you know what, we both have skill sets that we bring to the table here. Let's get together so we can actually uh, fulfill the Hippocratic Oath and help people. Why hasn't that conversation happened? Because the MDs don't give a damn about helping people. They're concerned with maintaining the position at the top at all all costs and this is why they absolutely 100 percent are undeserving of your respect you know they're like the good germans in world war ii you're right i mean they are their profession is the leading cause of death and well you know maybe they're really good god-fearing christians and, you know, maybe they're not the ones that prescribed Vioxx. Maybe they're not the ones that prescribed Premarin. Maybe they have relinquished their membership to the American Medical Association, but they still maintain the MD license. They haven't given that up. They haven't made a public statement that said, you know what, I just can't wear the white coat anymore. I can't do it because my profession is just full of it. They're not going to do that because they're cowards intellectual cowards moral cowards they are i mean there are a handful of mds 
who support and promote naturopathic medicine and who lobby for us in the legislature, but they haven't given up their MD degree. They could have become chiropractors. They could have become osteopaths. They could have become naturopaths. They could have become herbalists. They could have practiced acupuncture, traditional Chinese medicine. But, oh, no, 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 no. Got to have the cachet of being the MD. Oh, yes, it's very important. It's very important to be a member of the medical profession that's the leading cause of death in the United States, the leading cause of bankruptcy in the United States, because when I go to the restaurant and I show up in valet parking with MD on my license plate, oh, I get the red carpet treatment. Yeah, red for blood. So what what the heck are we going to do? Are are we going to fight them? (laughs) Well, you know... You have ten billion dollars you want to throw around. You got ten billion dollars. Call me up. We'll sue the American Medical Association for racketeering. I think there's a valid charge there. I think that there is. But you know, who has that kind of money? Not me. Not yet. <laughs> so, what we can do is an end around. We just ignore them. Just go away. Stop bothering me. My recommendation, you see someone with a white coat, you run the other way. You And you will never, ever, ever see me wear a white coat. Never. You will, you will not see it. For the same reason that you wouldn't see me wear a Ku Klux Klan outfit. You wouldn't see me do that. You wouldn't see me put a swastika on my arm either because these are all representatives, representations, right, of certain things. That's why they're there. The white coat and the stethoscope around the neck, that delineates MDs. Leading cause of death, leading cause of bankruptcy. An old-fashioned, outdated, unbelievably piss-poor scientific methodology. And, you know, uh, an organization that has gone out of its way to defraud, defame, debunk, slander every other medical practitioner on the face of God's green earth. Why on earth would I want to put a white coat on and associate myself with a group of people that despicable? I wouldn't, and I won't. So, if you see someone with a white coat on, go the other way. Laugh. Turn around, laugh in their face, turn around and walk away. Because they have nothing for you. You know, unless, of course, you're bleeding to death, and then go in forewarned and forearmed. That's the domain of the MD. Surgery when it's necessary, right? But, you know, like the fellow said, well, when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So even if you don't, in point of fact, need surgery, what do you think the surgeon's going to tell you? Well, you need surgery. So it's a sticky wicket. What are we going to do? Well, my recommendation is it's just... Just forget them. Forget them. Just forget them. And instead, educate yourself aggressively about your options inside of the domain of holistic medicine. And, you know, one of, again, another of life's greatest ironies is that we've all become culturally conditioned to believe that healing is a complicated, sophisticated process that can only take place in multi-million dollar high-tech medical facilities. It's nonsense. Surgery is complicated. Healing is easy. So educating yourself about things that you can do for yourself to support your body's built-in God-given ability to optimize its health, that learning curve is, there's a curve there, but it's a small curve. If you're smart enough to pass the driver's license test, You're smart enough to know the ins and outs of the holistic method and give your body a leg up. You are. It's simple stuff, folks. This is not rocket science. This is not, you know, complicated, sophisticated biochemical pathways with discernment of genetic variables and uh, epigenetic uh, constants and epigenetic stressors. No, no, no. That's nonsense. 90 essential nutrients, eliminate the 10 bad foods, get some antioxidants into your body every freaking day, and every once in a while do a cleanse. (laughs) I mean, 
that is a million times better than any medical insurance you could even ever think to buy. Why? Because med- does medical insurance support bone health? Does medical insurance support heart health? Does medical insurance do anything for you? No. What, and by the way, what is medical insurance? When you buy it, what are you doing? You're betting you're going to get so sick you won't be able to afford it, right? That's what you're doing. So isn't it better, rather than to waste money on medical insurance, to put that money towards essential nutrients that the body needs in order to be healthy? Isn't that a better expenditure of health care dollars? I think it is. And this is our method. Fire your medical doctor. Stop going to them for advice. Stop it. Just stop it. Stop it. And educate yourself about simple steps you can take to support and promote your body's ability to fix itself. And the best place to start to do that, drglidden.com, become an insider. I've got videos in there that will blow your mind and that will walk you through step by step simple things you can do right now to help your body bounce back. As God is my witness, we're suffering needlessly. But there is another way worthy of your consideration. It's right here, right now. Stick around. Much more to come. Let's go. Robert in L.A. Hey, Robert, thanks for the call. You are live. Hi, Dr. Glidden. What's up, Robert? I was calling because maybe about an hour ago, um, I've I've called before, but my dad got a, um, um, well, it seems like when, when he coughs, uh, too hard or he laughs too hard uh, he may lose like consciousness <laughs> and like start like he started kind of like twitching and then like his jaw got all locked up now if he laughs too hard this will happen yes yeah that's interesting how long has that been happening um well he says it's been maybe about 20 years all right, so if you ever need to get anything out of your dad, take him to a comedy club, right? And every time he passes out, you know, when he wakes up, you know, you can say, Dad, I really want that, whatever it is, or I'm going to make you laugh again, right? So that's one. That's one. You can, like, turn lemon lemons into lemonade. Uh, you know, that's this an interesting thing. I've never heard of this. Uh, you would think that I would have because this is really kind of you would think this would be a perfect fit for a classical homeopath, which I am, but I've never heard of this symptom before ever. The first thing, however, that springs to mind is it has something to do with um, lack of oxygen, right? So I would think he would need a circulation support, circulation support. So my recommendation for him would be, which is my recommendation for everybody, right? Everybody has to stop eating the 10 bad foods, number one. Um, and to support and promote healthy circulation, a really good place to start would be uh, one healthy body start pack 2.0 liquid. One healthy body start pack 2.0 liquid. Two bottles of selenium. A one bottle of plant-derived minerals per 100 pounds of body weight per month. Now, in addition to that, on top of that, one bottle of Ultimate Daily Capsules. One bottle of Ultimate Daily Capsules. I would also encourage him to learn, believe it or not, uh, the lymphatic breathing technique, the lymphatic breathing technique, and practice the lymphatic breathing technique uh, for 10 minutes twice a day. And you can learn how to do the lymphatic breathing technique by just going to drglidden.com and doing a, there's a little search button for my, for my old, uh, uh, radio programs. Into the little search box, type lymphatic breathing and the show that I talk about it pops right up and we explain how to do the lymphatic breathing. I would have him do that. I believe that this is a circulation issue. Um, that's at least if this was happening to me, that's how I would be leaning and that's where I would go. Does he have any other, like, you know, high blood pressure, a heartburn, anything else that's bothering him? Yeah, um, he has a number of things, um, but, um... Everybody does. He's, uh, you know, he's on dialysis and, um, his... Well, okay, so if someone's on dialysis, right, that's a circulation issue. Because Dr. Wallach did 25,000 autopsies, and when you start doing that 
many autopsies, you start to see patterns emerge. And what Wallach found was when he was um, autopsying animals or people with bad kidneys, the actual kidney itself was fine. The problem was the blood flow in and around the kidney. Because uh, the, the little arteries in the kidney, the little blood vessels in the kidney get clogged up the same way that the arteries in the heart get clogged up. And it's the same process, just coming out in a different part of the body now, right? The MD treatment for that is, so what the heck, we have no idea what causes that to happen. So let's just, you know, s- or, or, uh, put a stent in your body and circulate your blood through a giant machine to clean it out because we have no freaking idea what to do. So it's a circulation issue, which you know, kind of uh, makes me feel like the smartest man in class right now, but it's the same protocol. However, we must be advised here that when dialysis is in play, another thing to do to optimize circulations, uh, uh, to optimize circulation is antioxidant intake. 100,000 ORAC of antioxidants is a very good thing to add to that program. 100,000 ORAC of antioxidants. Remember, Robert, everything connects. It's never just one thing. It's everything. And this is the holistic method through and through. Lean on it. Have your father lean on it and call us with your results. Hour two coming up, folks. Go to the TV and join the live chat. It's the second hour. That's right, the second hour, ladies and gentlemen. Check out the live stream, the Dr. Glidden Show TV, where you can join in a chat room where there currently are 64 people from all over the world. The Dominican Republic is in the house, Winnipeg, the Bay Area, Lubbock, Texas, San Diego. Uh, Istanbul is in the house, Switzerland is in the house. Um, Albany, New York is in the house, Florida, uh, New Jersey is in the house, San Mateo, California, Fayetteville, North Carolina, where worldwide Dominican Republic is in the house. Got to love it. The Dr. Glidden Show TV. Check it out. Join the worldwide live chat. It's free. And if you like the stuff we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen, if you feel compelled, if I have struck a chord in you, and you want to learn more, well, guess what? It's your lucky day. Because we exist as a grassroots coalition of uh, independent business owners all over the world, all over the world, espousing this message of the optimization of human health through the realization of the realization of human health through science-based, clinically verified medical nutrition. Medical nutrition protocols for the masses, foundation, boilerplate, medical nutrition for everybody. This is it. So if you like what you hear and you want to learn more, and if you're listening on a terrestrial radio station, then listen closely during the commercial breaks, and there's an 800 number or a station call-in number. There's a call-in number that they will advertise. Call that number. And you will talk to a longevity representative in your area who can answer all of your questions and take you to the next step. If you were directed to this radio program or this uh, Internet broadcast by a friend of yours and you want to know more or even by uh, an enemy of yours or an acquaintance of yours and you want to know more, then get in touch with them uh, because that's how we do it. People recommend... Uh, their friends and family members and church members listen to this radio program. And so if you like what you hear and you want to get involved with more, then go back to the person who recommended this, who showed you this, and that's how we do it. And if you found me all by yourself and you want to learn more, 855-347-3696. That's 855-347-3696, extension one. Let's go back to the phones now. Tiny in Indianapolis is up. Hey, Tiny, thanks for the phone call. You are live. Yes, good afternoon, Dr. Glidden. Uh, Dr. Hey. Glidden, I was a uh, bi Hey, Tiny, you're going to have to speak up. Tiny, you're going to have to speak up. I can hardly hear you. Yes, good afternoon, Dr. Wallet. Uh, Dr. Glidden, I was advised to give you a call from someone here in Indianapolis. But I was calling you because I have a cyst on my back the size of a quarter, yeah. And then it became a cyst and yeah. came yeah. to a whitehead, and yeah. then it burst. Yeah. 
and uh, it has a cheesy liquid substance that's oozing out of it. So now it's about two inches long. I went to the doctor, and they prescribed an antibiotic for about 10 days, and it still hasn't um, dried up. So I went back, and uh, they prescribed another antibiotic and something called Axone or ointment. And so I was giving you a call to see what I can do to try to treat the root cause because they're stating that it's um, back acne and uh, estrogen. Yeah, they're nuts. So what you want to do is get your money back, right, because their therapeutics failed you. So I would go back and say, hey, look, I've been here twice. This is a relatively simple thing. You told me to do two things. They both failed. I want my money back and I'm going to file a complaint with my state's board of medicine because you suck at what you do. I can't believe you're still allowed to practice medicine when you produce such unbelievably horrible results. Why don't you quit your job or join the military and do something good for the world, do some military field medicine, for goodness sake, because that's the domain of your profession. You've really let me down. I'm, I'm upset, and I want my money back, quite frankly. I'm going to go back to the front desk at the nurse. I'd like you to accompany me, please, and I'd like you to issue a full and complete refund because your therapeutics have failed me miserably. Look, we do that if it was our automobile. I mean, we buy a brand new automobile, even if we buy a used automobile and we're driving it down the road and the tire falls off. Well, you're going to, you're going to seek retribution for that. You're going to seek compensation for that. But when the MDs screw up, we all give them a pass. We do. We give them a pass. And I don't know why we do it. You know, we've become culturally conditioned for, you know, mediocrity, I think. I'm not really sure. But listen, from our point of view, one of the best things to do here, um, to support you. So you need, um, immune system support internally and externally. So externally, yeah, you want to get some colloidal silver, colloidal silver, and you want to get that in a spray bottle. And every hour or so, you want to spray or have somebody spray the area of the cyst liberally with the colloidal silver. And then you want to soak a gauze bandage, a sterile gauze ba bandage in colloidal silver and tape it directly over the cyst. Tape it directly over the cyst. And I would do that four times a day. I would change that bandage four times a day. That's what I would do externally. Internally, I would do, oh, well, how much do you weigh? Uh, how much do you weigh? 129. All right. So internally, I would do, I would get two bottles of a product called Killer Biotic, two bottles of Killer Biotic, and I would take six Killer Biotic a day with meals. Uh, six killer biotic a day with meals until both bottles are empty. Six killer biotic a day until both bottles are empty. Take those with meals. Uh, and the killer biotic is a combination of herbs which stimulates your immune system to work better, and that's what you need. Now, interestingly enough, you need to get on the other side of the negative effects that were generated in your body by the delivery of the two antibiotics. And in order to do that, we need to do some cleanup here. The easiest way to do the cleanup is with a, a tasty longevity product called Root Beer Belly. I would get two boxes of Root Beer Belly, and I would consume two packets of Root Beer Belly a day between meals. Two packets of Root Beer Belly a day between meals. Uh, that's kind of, you know, what's necessary here to get on the other side of this condition. If you to support and promote a healthy immune system and get on the other side of the net negative effects generated by the antibiotics, if you want to take it to the next level and kind of optimize your body's health moving forward in your life, then that's a completely different story, and that would ent it would entail uh, eliminating. There are ten foods that we've we 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 believe are bad for the human body, and everybody needs to stop eating. You can get that list for free on my website, drglidden.com. Just sign up for my newsletter. It's right there on the front page. It's free. Eliminate the 10 bad foods. And at your body weight, here's what I would take every month as a nutritional supplement, you know, strengthen the body program. One Healthy Body Start Pack 2.0 Liquid. It's a crazy long name, I know. They really should shorten that. It's called the Healthy Body Start Pack 2.0 Liquid. You need one of those. 
two bottles of Ultimate Selenium. That's S like Sam, E, L like Larry, E, N like Nancy, I, U, M like Mary. And one bottle of Sweet Ease. One bottle of Sweet Ease. Uh, one bottle of Sweet Ease, two Ultimate Selenium, and one um, Healthy Body Start Pack 2.0 liquid. Eliminate the 10 bad foods. That's what I would do for the rest of my life moving forward in order to optimize your body's ability to have a healthy life. In the meantime, though, do the killer biotic, the colloidal silver, and the root beer belly. And call us back with results. Um, I'd look forward to that, and I really want to know here what happens to you, especially since the yes. MDs let you down so hard. Dr. Glenn, I, I do have a question. So the root beer belly, because right now my uh, stomach is upset, and I'm wondering if so that is probably from the uh, antibiotics. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I mean, you know, I don't have a crystal ball, but if I had to guess, I would say yes. Mm -hmm. I, I yes, mean, that's a, well, that's a common be. side effect of antibiotics, um, you know, plus it, especially antibiotics that don't work. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. that was the stupidest thing, stupidest prescription ever to give an, an internal antibiotic for this. I mean, stupid prescription. They should have their medical license revoked for six months, be pilloried in the town square, and we can throw tomatoes and lettuce at them. Maybe they'll snap out of it and stop thinking that they're so full of themselves, for goodness sake. These people do not deserve your respect. They've let you down twice. If I were you, I'd go and ask for a refund, and I would bring three really big uh, male members, uh, people in your family, friends, uh, police officers, something, have them all dress mm -hmm. in black suits, um, put dark glasses on them, have them put, put those little recording, you know, those little microphone things in their ears so yeah. they look like, you know, Secret Service, and just have them stand behind you with their arms crossed, not saying a word while you ask for a refund. I would videotape the whole thing, put it up on YouTube, and you will be an overnight sensation. I appreciate you very much. Now go get your health back. Lily in Chicago is up next. Hey, Lily, what's going on? Hello? Hello. Go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, you're coming in loud and clear. Awesome, awesome. Um, that's a good uh, Well, now um, I just lost you. You were coming in loud and clear, but I think you must have changed the phone orientation. That's, that's a good Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's a little bit better. Okay, I will talk louder. Okay, um, talk talk louder. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, Lily, Lily, I'm I am um, I'm a friend of Billy. Billy, she had to get off the phone, but she wanted to let me let you know that she's a five foot female, two hundred and forty two pounds, and after an MRI, the doctors want her to have both of her knees replaced because they say she has bone on bone, torn ligaments. And, of course, she's in a lot of pain. But she's a diabetic. She has high blood pressure, cholesterol. Um, and she's had these things for over a decade. Well, I mean, isn't that telling? I mean, isn't that just telling of how completely ineffective conventional medicine is? I mean, she's been under their care her entire life. And, you know, her knees are completely gone. She's got blood sugar issues. I mean, she's falling apart. And... It's the doctor's fault. That that's why she's falling apart. Because she's gone to the wrong doctor. And, you know, what do they have? Are they apologetic? No, it's, it's not the doctor's fault, right? She's got the bad blood sugar gene. She's got the bad knee gene. Can't be the doctor's fault. Stick around. We're coming up against a hard break. I'll bring you back as soon as we come back from these commercials. Thank you. You know, it's crazy, isn't it, that, you know, we just kind of trust i think i think our human beings are trusting by nature and i think somebody in power somewhere knows that and has taken advantage i think your our trust has been taken advantage of i that's what i think that's part of it but you know that's as much of a conspiracy theorist as i'm going to get it it just boggles my mind that a, a profession can screw up as much as the mds do and nothing happens I don't understand how that is. I really don't get that. Um, I simply just don't get that. We're talking to Lily here. Let's bring her back and see if we can't answer some questions. So, Lily, there's so much going on here, right? I think a, a good place to start would be with uh, the Healthy Body Start Pack 2.0 liquid, 
one of those, two sweeties, and two selenium, uh, and two liquid glucogel plus per 100 pounds of body weight per month. That's two liquid glucogel plus, two selenium, uh, two sweeties, and one Healthy Body Start Pack 2.0 liquid per 100 pounds of body weight. I think that's a very good place to start. you got to start somewhere. She needs to stop eating the 10 bad foods. Um, you can also go to the grocery store and get some Knox gelatin. Have her take two, three, four packets of gelatin in hot water into her body uh, a day. Uh, that can help. Um, and we need to be aggressive here. But, you know, this is a this is a sticky wicket because this woman is really in the weeds and she's, I can tell that she's in the in the MD's camp. So and this is going to be an expensive protocol. She's going to have to change her diet. I mean, if she's up for all that, then God bless you. And, you know, you'll be the best thing that ever happened to her. But if not, you know, this might ultimately be a fool's errand. And, you know, it would be better if you could have her call me. I'm sorry that I wasn't able to get to the get to your call sooner. But that's the that's the recommendation. That's yeah. Yeah. She, she, she is listening to you. She, just wanna, she, she is listening to you. All right, even better. All right, so then, great. Then that's what needs to happen here. And I have to tell you, right, it's like the fella said, when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So the surgeon, the knee surgeon, who has no experience with medical nutrition, zero experience. They didn't get taught it in school. They have no clinical experience with it. They didn't do any clinical you know, education after they graduated. The knee replacement surgeon, the orthopedic surgeon, doesn't know anything about what I'm talking about, knows nothing about it. So from their limited point of view, their, your only option is surgery, but they don't understand that their point of view is a limited point of view. Now, you know, sometimes uh, we're able to intervene and help the knee optimize its structure and function, even when everybody else thinks it's too far gone. And sometimes it's too far gone. However, even if it is too far gone and you have to have the knee replacement surgery, whatever, it is a thousand times better to go under the knife and have that surgical procedure or any other surgical procedure when your body has been neutrified and strengthened. So this program is like never fail fudge because it's either going to cut the mustard and help the knees to come back or not, but if not, it's going to strengthen your body so that you're able to withstand the stress of surgery. And we see this happen all the time because even when surgery is in fact indicated, when people who are on longevity products get surgery, their recovery time is remarkable, and the surgeon can't believe it. So either way, um, this is a good program uh, uh, for you to, to get on board with. And remember, right, because this is a holistic intervention, we look to see positive results anywhere, right? Mood, energy, sleep, appetite, weight, aches and pains, whatever, so if you decide to move forward with the program, be mindful of how it affects everything, not just how it affects your blood sugar and the knee pain, because everything's connected here from the holistic vantage point. And once we secure a positive, measurable, noticeable change somewhere, somewhere in the body-mind, then that's a, a good herald for things to come. And, you know, we just take it a couple of weeks at a time. Appreciate your trust. Appreciate your patience. Call me back in the future with a report. I look forward to it. The TV, ladies and gentlemen, is where you want to be right now. What on earth are you waiting for? Hey, 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 Terry from Virginia is back. Hey, Terry, thanks for the phone call. You are live. Give them back a little bit of the good feeling that they gave us. Come on in, Terry. Come on in, Terry. I know you're there. I can hear me in the background. Uh, yeah, Dr. Glidden. Terry, Terry, Terry. What's happening? Uh, hi. Can you hear me now? I didn't. I didn't even know you was on the phone. I just picked it up and I heard your voice. I was well, and the then you're my my new psychic friend. Yep, you are live on the radio, Terry. What's happening in Virginia? 
same old thing. I got my Jeep out of the shop today, so I've been uh, joy riding a little bit. It's been broke down for two years. Oh, you just got it back? <laughs> nice. Yeah, I just kind of let it sit. I just forgot about it. I didn't really care. Is it a Willys? But, uh, huh? What kind of Jeep? It's a 95 Jeep Cherokee. I bought it new in 95. Wow. Time flies, I've been driving it, it ever since. <laughs> <laughs> But, so, uh, what's got, happening, Terry? I got the uh, ACG test results back on the 22nd. Yeah. Um, the 50 and above, on up to 80, is positive. 50 and below was negative. That was 52. Well, you got to love it, so you're negative. Oh, well, you're right on the borderline. 50, yeah, and, below right on the is, borderline. 50 and below is negative, yeah? Yeah, and so, um, well, it said positive, so I'm going to go to uh, the iridologist that I used to see yeah. pretty soon and also see what she's got to say about it. Well, how are you I feeling, and, you know, symptomatically, how are you feeling? Uh, I feel like I've always felt. <laughs> I don't feel sick, you know. So things are, you know, pretty good as far as you're concerned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. okay. And you're, um, you're you're tolerating the supplements, okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm on the Z Radical. I just started on that. Um, the other stuff you recommended. The uh, you said twelve hundred calories and below a day. I don't know if I'm doing that or not. I got to learn to count calories, and I don't know whether I should be uh, holding off on meats and just eating fruits and vegetables and doing juices and smoothies for about three or four weeks. That would be a most excellent idea. What about uh, these be nut bars most... that I love and these raw food bars that I love so much and these R green drinks that I'm drinking? Well, keep going for it. I mean, you love them. Uh, I got no problem with those things. They're, they're good, and uh, there's no reason for you to stop doing those by any way, shape, or form. So uh, I'm good with that. Um, I think you're going to feel better if you do that as well. Okay, well, then I'll stick with that program then, and I'll uh, uh, go see this lady uh, here in the next week or so, as soon as I can get up with her for an appointment and see what she's got to say and uh, uh, take it from there. And I wanted to ask you about uh, my high blood pressure protocol that I went on in September. Yeah. I was supposed to have, uh, which I didn't do, you know, because I was trying to cut corners, you put me on three scoops of the tangy tangerine for my weight. I was 160. I'm still like 155. And um, I've been doing like two scoops. And then about two months ago, I thought, well, I'm going to be real smart. I'm going to go on this on-the-go healthy start pack and save some more money and go off the tangy tangerine. And then my blood, I started having blood pressure problems off and on. So I talked to uh, uh, Mike Phillips yeah. about it. And he said that I should do the Tangy Tangerine and the Ultimate Dailies, but to talk to you first to see what you say. Well, you know, from our point of view, blood pressure, right, most of the time is not enough calcium and not enough magnesium. So the first, how much do you weigh? 155. All right. So as an experiment for seven days, I would do four ounces of the liquid calcium a day. I would do one ounce of the liquid calcium and one ounce of orange juice four times a day, and inside of seven days, I would look to see if that brings my blood pressure down. If that does bring your blood pressure down, then you need to hang out with that dose of calcium for a month or two. Now, if, if after doing that, there's absolutely positively no change whatsoever, uh, then, you know, it's not a calcium issue. It's probably a circulation issue in the kidney. And then you would lean on the ultimate daily capsules, the ultimate daily capsules. You've got to kind of, you know, take this one step at a time to try to figure it out. Um, but that's the program that I would do. I would, you know, go crazy for calcium for seven days and see if that produces a noticeable positive change in the blood pressure. I bet you that it's going to. Okay. Uh, All right. All right, Terry. You, know, you want me to, like, go up on the tangy tangerine to three scoops? I got two canisters. Well, that would be best. I mean, that's appropriate for your body weight, one scoop three times a day. Um, but I don't think that's going to have much effect on the blood pressure. I think that the calcium will. Um, but, you know, it's all works together, right? And the optimal dose 
for you at your body weight of the Beyond Tangy is three scoops a day. So either way, that's not a bad idea for you. Um, but again, you know, we need to have normal blood pressure, so that needs to be handled. And I would do the calcium experiment for seven days first. Okay. Well, what about ultimate uh, EFA? Should I be doing two or four a day? Well, um, in a perfect world, it'd be six um, because, you know, it's one. But, well, you're 150 pounds, so you're in the gray area there. A, a, a four would be better for you. I would rather see you do four than two a day. You know, two with breakfast, two with lunch, two with lunch, two with dinner. It's best to take those with a meal. Now, that's how I would handle that. All right. All right, Terry, go out and have some more fun four-wheeling. Call me back every couple of weeks with a report. I will look forward to it. Linda from Florida is up next. Let's go to Florida where it must be hotter than Hades, for goodness sake. Hey, Linda, thanks for the call. You are live. Yes. Mm-hmm. I Pretty wanted hot. to know uh, what I w- what could you, what would be best for me for hair loss and balding. It seems to be a problem now. What can I do uh, for that? Well, um, there's a number of things that are in play there. Do you have a thyroid issue? Has anyone ever told you that you have a thyroid issue? No, no one has said anything about thyroid issue. Okay, so I, you know, and I'm. I'm not saying that you do have one, but when we think about hair loss, there's a couple of things that we think about. From our point of view, the holistic point of view, which is the correct point of view, the human body is like a castle. Mm-hmm. You know, those old fashioned castles. In the, in the very middle, there was the, you know, the, the keep where everybody lived. And then outside of that, there was a little courtyard, and then there was a wall around that, and then there was another wall around that, and then there was a moat, and then there was another wall around that, and there were all these layers of defense. Well, the human body is the same way, and when the human body is lacking essential nutrients, Mm -hmm. when your body has run out of the stuff it needs, you know, to maintain its structure and function, it is in the habit of stealing nutrients from non-essential tissue, like the hair, Mm -hmm. to keep essential tissue, like the lungs and the heart, alive. So often, hair loss is a simple sign of chronic, long-standing nutrient deficiencies, and it's kind of like those chickens have all of a sudden come home to roost, you know, and so your body starts losing hair simply because you don't have enough nutrients to keep the hair healthy. So Mm -hmm. now... The operative question here is whether or not you can grow it back. I've met people who have. Mm -hmm. I've met people who haven't. I've met people who have completely changed the color of their hair. I mean, they had bone white hair, gray hair. They Mm -hmm. go on the nutritional supplements for a couple of months, and now their hair is jet black again or it's flaming red like it used to be. I've seen these things happen. I've also seen these things not happen. So hair is a funny thing. Um, there's really too many factors that are in play here for me to be able to say, well, look, I can I can virtually guarantee that if somebody has a blood sugar issue and they get on board with a healthy blood sugar pack, they're going to see a noticeable, measurable positive change. The same thing with arthritis. Well, those things are, are you know set in stone as far as producing consistent positive outcomes. But hair loss, I don't really know. However. You know, our point of view, Linda, is that everybody needs 90 essential nutrients. And the 90 essential nutrients are not in the food. They're just not there. Mm -hmm. So everybody's body is deficient to varying degrees. And so whether or not this therapeutic is sufficient to the cause to help your hair grow back, it's kind of like you got nothing to lose here because your body needs the stuff anyway. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah. I would experiment with it. I, I would I would do how much do you weigh, Linda? hundred and fifty two. All right, so that would be easy. So my recommendation for you for um a three month experiment, ninety days, uh per month I would do uh one healthy body start pack two point oh liquid. One healthy yep, body I know start it's pack. Oh, two point yeah, two point oh liquid. Oh, it's a, it's a st- stupid long name, right? Yeah, one healthy th- body pack, uh, 2.0 oh, liquid. Yeah, that's you need one of those a month, okay? Well, where would I get this? 
Well, I'll tell you where to get this in a second. Oh, but first, okay. got to tell you what to get. You need one of those. Uh-huh. You need three bottles of something called Ultimate Selenium. And I'll spell oh, that for you. That's S like Sam, E, L like Larry, E, N like Nancy, I, U, M. You need three of those. Selenium. Yep. Three of those. And one bottle of plant-derived minerals. One bottle of plant-derived minerals. One of those. Derived minerals. Now, how did you hear about this um, broadcast? I heard it on uh, a W, uh, a radio station, uh, WOKB, a couple days ago. And okay. uh, he said that, I think you were on the program. Was it with I Pastor was G? I really impressed with your approach. Was it Pastor so G? I, uh, tried to, I tried to get you on the website. But I can't figure out, you know, just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's all right. Well, you found me now. So that was Pastor G's show down in Florida, right? Yes. All right. So you want to call that radio station up and say that you want to take the supplements that Pastor G recommends. And they'll put you in touch with him. And you order the stuff through his longevity group. He gets credit for it. You get the supplements at the wholesale price. He helps you figure out how to take it, and life is good, and this is how we lift each other up. So call yeah. that radio station. Uh, get in touch. Call yeah, I guess call them up. Call and them tell, up. Tell them you want to talk to, you know, the, the guy that orders the supplements for Pastor G's show. Life uh-huh. is good. Let's finish out the show with my favorite city in the United States, San Diego. Man, oh, man, I love I loves me some San Diego. Let's talk to Jerry. Hey, Jerry, thanks for the call. You lucky man living down in San Diego. What's going on? Well, I've got a friend on the line also, Ginny, and she's got a vertigo problem. Uh, was flat on her back here a little bit ago, so I'll have her come on with that. And uh, secondarily, she's already had a knee replacement, and I'm not sure that that really went well. And so somebody's saying, you better get the other one done. But anyway, vertigo is the main <laughs> question. So. Okay, well, it's important. Uh, that's great, Jerry, and I appreciate your helping, you know, those people in your life, right? And this is what I mean mm-hmm. about longevity. We're other cent- other centered individuals. Um, we look forward to helping other people in our life, and we go uh, outside of our comfort zone to do that. Now, this is an interesting thing to consider because, as far as we're concerned, uh, the major cause of vertigo is osteoporosis of the skull. It's funky and weak bones in the skull and you know everything in the body is connected so if this person has funky and weak knees and you know they had a knee replacement surgery well it would just go to show that they also have funky bones in the skull and now the other knee is starting to go so i believe that these three conditions are three different arms of the same octopus and you know if the first knee replacement surgery is starting to not feel so great then that's also a testament to the fact that her bones are losing nutrients. And, you know, she didn't have a funky knee because she had a titanium deficiency, right? She had a fake knee deficiency. She had funky knees because her body ran out of the nutrients it needed to make the knees healthy, and the knee replacement surgery doesn't change that. It's like painting over the mold in the basement, you know, and even if you use glidden paint, right? That's not a good idea. <laughs> Way to go. Right? Because the mold's just going to come back, right? So <laughs> so she needs comprehensive, aggressive bone and joint support. And, you know, I did a webinar about this, by the way, Jerry, and I think you're an insider. And if mm-hmm. you go to your insider subscription and you look at the webinar that I did called mm-hmm. Ringing in the Ears or Tinnitus or Ringing in the Ears, I talk about vertigo in that same webinar, and so you could forward that to your friend and have her watch the video. It's an hour-long video that I did, and it walks people right through how we believe this happens. Um, It was a pretty good webinar, I think. It was one of my favorites. It's available for anybody at my website, uh, drglidden.com. Become an insider. Uh, Become an insider uh, and uh, get some knowledge because we all desperately need it. So the recommendation here is easy. Eliminate the 10 bad foods, number one. Number two, per month, 
in order to support and promote optimal bone and joint function in the human body, the recommendation is one healthy body start pack 2.0 liquid, one of those, 2.0 liquid, uh, two ultimate selenium, two ultimate selenium, one plant-derived minerals, and a two liquid glucogel plus per 100 pounds of body weight per month. It's very important that she completely eliminates all soda pop, too. Zero tolerance for soda pop because the phosphoric acid in soda pop will eat away at the bones and make everything worse. Now, she may experience momentary relief of the whirling vertigo that may, she may, the operative word here being may. If she gets the CM cream, puts it on a Q-tip, and applies it liberally in both ear canals, and you know, you got to be careful when you're putting Q-tips in the ears so you don't pop your eardrum. I've never seen that happen, but you just have to be careful when you're sticking stuff in your ears. So I would get a Q-tip and I would liberally put the CM cream on the end of it and I would stick it inside both ear canals um, and would then wait 20 minutes and look to see if the whirling vertigo is knocked down. If it is, and that's a good thing, and you can use the CM cream applied internally to the ear canals every two or three hours to manage the symptoms while you are waiting for the medical nutrition to help this from the inside out, which, of course, is a longer-term problem. That's what I would do, Jerry. Keep up the good work, man. You are the best. This is how we roll, ladies and gentlemen. Dedicated human beings all around the world helping total strangers family members, friends, and church members into the wonderful undiscovered country of medical nutrition. Until next time, live long and prosper.